Tim, hold the box. Uh, just saying, I just got done playing a game of Arkwright. Uh, this is a game. Here, we'll just go ahead and maybe if I can find you. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, we just got done playing a game of Arkwright, a game that I was very interested in playing. It's from Spielworks. Uh, it is, I believe, just released at Essen this last year. I own the other two like predecessors of their like Coal series, which is Ruhr Schiffart, and then it followed it up with Coal and Colony. And uh, two games that I very much enjoy, uh, even though they're, they're kind of a cut away from what I normally play. But I was really excited to play this, mostly because of the fact that the only way you can get them right now is uh, they cost about $100. And uh, so I wanted to know whether or not I thought this would be worth my money. I'm kind of a completionist a little bit with a series of games, and I wanted to make sure that I'd actually enjoy this game and I'd play it more than like once every two, three years. And I think I am. I, I, there's a lot going on. Uh, I, I didn't grasp everything. We did play kind of the, not the super easy version, but the slightly spinning more, mule. the spinning mule version of it, which is an alternate from the spinning jenny, which is the most basic version of the game. Um, I did actually finish second uh, with my, uh, my my industry here. Hold on, I'm just going to show you my, the board real quick. Uh, what we have is, it's basically, you know, it, people say it looks like a giant spreadsheet game, and it is pretty much a giant spreadsheet game. You have um, certain things and actions take place up here, which cause you to have to produce your items in your different uh, industries. You have uh, bread and and uh, clothing and cutlery and apparently lamps. I, I, I can only assume it's oil or something, right? What? Lamp oil? Or just, lamps. What, what, what are machines for making oil? <laughs> uh, I, well, I don't know, like oil <laughs> refining. Oil, 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 so, oil but anyway, so, you, machine, so you have, and here are all these, all, this whole thing is filled up with workers, and as you hire workers, you pull them off here, and the more people that are working, the more the demand is for the different items. And then over here is the value of the items that you have, and the black cubes are like uh, importing or something like that? Yep, or like, so, importers. So, so you have importers that can kind of cut into your profits. So you try to make sure that you make you make stuff, but you also got to make sure that the stuff that you make is actually good and, and like people actually want it. And you do that by over here, each person has a player board. You have your four different types of factories. In this case, I only built two factories. I only focused on bread and clothing. And you know, so then you hire workers. These are workers that I've hired and I replaced a lot of them with machines, as you can see here, which you know, it's just an automate, you know, so I don't have to pay as much so like of course I'm firing people and sending them to the poorhouse but I do that because I can save money because I'm a ruthless industrial baron in the late 1700s so <laughs> yes twirl our mustaches and and count the money so I'm just gonna go around the table with the people I played with I had an enjoyable time playing this this is my uh, new friend Jeff hey. you've played this several times before a few times yep and you like it uh, yeah yeah uh, I did not quite as well as I have in the past uh, tried something new uh, but uh, I like the fact that ultimately with this version, you only have 12 actions. They may be a little bit more complex uh, for each given one, but uh, it's fairly tight in what you can accomplish in uh, the course of the game. So, Well, and I appreciate any man who has longer hair, a beard, and wears a baseball cap backwards. So, <laughs> All right, Jeff was one of the guys that taught me the game, so thank you very much for taking the time to do that. And also, Tim as well. Uh, talk about this. Tim. Tim, Tim, you destroyed me at Russian Railroads last oh, yeah, year. I can, I can look for a year ago. And then, and then, uh, but but this this year you taught and you taught me Russian Railroads last year, and you destroyed me. And this time you taught me this, and you finished dead last. I believe. Hey, I uh, nobody look at my board. So like, I can act like no. Like, I tried some really great weird stuff. Actually, I did. I had way too many patrons, but I never got to use them and stuff. It's really. So let me ask you, you. You played this now what a half a dozen times? Yeah, I'd put it around that. And you have you played the water frame? The the, the I have played. Okay. We played the water frame. The okay. The water frame, although yeah. we phoned out we were misplaying some stuff. Okay, well, the, the, here's my final question. I mean, because you and I both discussed, like, the exploration part of games, and once you kind of learn everything, it, you kind of, like, we were talking about Russian Railroad, so it didn't really have anything left for you or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you played it so much and you've explored all the options and everything. Do you see yourself that find, find yourself thinking um, that's going to happen with well, this game? In this game, because of the spinning mule, we use a certain specific amount of these special ability types. There are a pretty good number of them left that were, would randomly be into the game. So every game you're going to be playing differently. 
She got one special tile. These uh, two? Actually, you, it was this one. Together. The charisma one is what won you the game. Oh, yeah. The yeah. tiebreaker thing. Yeah. Okay? That is what won you the game. So, and if, since there was only one of those in the game, it was a fight for the first person to get that. And then we would all have to fight against her, which is kind of what it was. But I think there maybe is only one of those in the game. Uh, so but, so you, you can see how this I can see how it's going to play very differently every time. All right. Awesome. And we have our grand winner. Hi. And give us your name. I'm Aishwarya. Aishwarya. Yeah. Okay, and so you you must have asked me, I think, three or four times when this game was going to be played. You were yes, really yes. eager to play this. <laughs> yes, this is my third time playing this. And you just kept on telling me this is like your second favorite game, like number two. Yes, after Dominant Species. Right? After Dominant yeah. Species. So, a girl after my own heart. So, uh, so, so what do you, why, why do you like this one so much? It's like very heavy and it's my type of game, like very complex. I like complex games. So, so, so like, where would, what were, would, would you say this is more complex or less complex than Dominant Species? It is more complex. More complex? Yeah. So why does Dominant Species still like uh, your favorite? Just because you like theme better or? I actually I understood the, the game the first time I played but this is like taking like four or five times to like really understand what's happening in it. So are you going to buy this? Sure. I, I will. <laughs> you, yeah. you don't understand the game yet? You kind of crush it. <laughs> 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 feel bad when you yeah, will some, understand. Yeah, some point of the game is like, <laughs> I don't want to play with you anymore. I still have to go deeper. I've not played the water frame. Oh, yeah, I can still play that. <laughs> All right, well, awesome. Thanks again, Tim, Jeff, for helping me uh, learn to play the game. Uh, thank you to everybody that's uh, watching the video and tuning in. Uh, we'll have more. This is still Saturday, so we're still playing more games. And, well, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs>